ACFS, what is good, y'all? It is summer tours. We're on our second week of summer tours, and right now we're actually at my home base, the Doral campus. We're having a retro night. And listen, if you're watching this online, I know it's because you're probably on vacation and you probably missed out. But guess what? It's still not done. We're still not done yet. Next week, we're going to West Kendall. We're having our carnival night there. So make sure to come through and, and we, we can see each other in person next week. But man, we are so excited because these past, this past week, this week, and for the next two weeks, we're talking about four extremely, extremely critical mental health topics. And this series is called I'm Not Happy. And last week we kicked it off talking about depression. And this today, we're gonna to be talking about something that I think both you and I, maybe you have experienced it, maybe you're experiencing it today, or maybe you will experience it. Well, I'm pretty sure you will experience it later on in life if you haven't experienced it already. And the thing we're gonna be talking about is anxiety. You know, uh, but real quick before we talk about what does the Word of God say, and, and listen, I'm gonna go based off the Word of God because if you know me, I'm, I'm just a teacher of God's Word. I'm not a mental health professional. I'm not a counselor. I'm just teaching what, is, what does God say about this topic and how we should approach it in our relationship with Him and our relationship with others. But, you know, middle school, uh, I was in Orlando with my family, and my family and I, we were uh, about to go to the parks and we were, uh, we were about to go to sleep and, and getting ready uh, for the next day. And I remember that in the night, uh, my, 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 my little brother starts to scream in the middle of the night. He starts to scream, he starts to scream for my mom. And my mom comes into the room and he says, mom, it's happening again, it's happening again. And I can hear this from the living room, from the living room where I was sleeping. And I remember that I, uh, immediately I started to uh, fear, I, started to, uh, I was terrified and I was afraid, although I did not know what was happening within, within him and his body. And I remember that my mom told me that she turned his head and she saw that his vein on the side of his neck started to pump up and down. Now, the reason why I said it, it's happening again is because months previously before that, he felt like his heartbeat was uh, beating very, very fast. And so in this second instance, he says that it's happening again, it's happening again. And well, then when I go into the room, I see him very pale. I see him very white. I see his, his energy is very, very low. And immediately, my mom starts to freak out. We're all starts to freak out. We call the ambulance, and the ambulance comes and picks him up. And I immediately remember that I went back into my living room. And although uh, he wasn't with me, and he was in the ambulance on the way to the hospital, I remember that I looked at my hands, and my hands were trembling. And I remember that I started to feel goosebumps. And I remember that my mind was running so hard, and, and my mind was just running all these thoughts like, man, what's going to happen to him? What is happening to him right now? What are they doing to him? What's going to, is he alive right now? What is happening in his heart? Is he gonna make it in time? Will I ever see my younger brother again? And all these thoughts and all, all this is running through my mind and at that moment as a young teenager, young teenage boy, I didn't know what I was experiencing at that time. I didn't know what was happening in my body. But now that I'm a little bit older, I understand what I was dealing with. And at that moment, I was dealing with anxiety. I was anxious. I was anxious about what would happen to my brother. What would happen to, uh, to, to his body? What would happen with, with the ambulance? What are they going to do? What are they going to do to him? And maybe, maybe you had a similar situation. It might have been a, a younger brother, older brother or sister with their health or, or a family member. But maybe it's not a health concern. Maybe you're anxious about before you take a test. Or maybe you're anxious about your future, what, what your future will look like in 10 years. Maybe you're anxious about where you graduate and where, where will you go when you graduate. Maybe you're in that process in high school. Maybe you're in middle school and you just got into uh, middle school. You're anxious about your friends and the group of friends that you're going to choose. There's so many things that both you and I, in our normal day-to-day -day basis, that we can get anxious about. And today, we're going to be talking about why is it that we get anxious, but also, what does God say about anxiety and how we can handle this thing called anxiety? Now, before we get into God's Word, you know, I want to share with you guys the definition of anxiety based off Google. Look at what Google says about the definition of anxiety. Anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. So this story that I, this personal story that I just shared with y'all, clearly not only that I was nervous for my brother, 
I was worried for him, and I was at unease. Why? Because it was based off his life, and I did not know what was happening. And the same way that you and I, whether it's a test, whether it's your future, whether it's your love life, you don't know. You are uncertain about the outcome. And it could be an imminent event. It could be something so big and something so ginormous to you. And you have no idea. You have no power. You have no control. You don't know these things. You get anxious about them. But look at what Jesus says on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 26. He's talking about all these different subjects and all these different topics. And then he addresses anxiety. This is what he says. He says, therefore... I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow, neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? What Jesus is saying here is that the birds are in the sky that are continuously hustling for their food. You would never see a bird stay on a wire or on a tree for more than maybe 10 minutes. They're constantly flying around. They're constantly looking for their next food, for their family, for their babies, for themselves. They're constantly hustling and going and trying to feed their, themselves and their family. But just as God provides the birds who are who are going and, and being and, and working and, and, and pursuing food, if God is taking care of the birds, why are we anxious about life? Why are we anxious about things in life? And the reason why Jesus says that is because birds, although they do carry some value in this thing called the world and the earth, he says, listen, you hold so much more value than birds. Why? Because not only did I create you in my image, but I created you in my likeness. And guess what? Even more to it, you hold the Spirit of God. If you are a believer, if you are a child of God, you have the Holy Spirit in you. So when you are worried about something, you're not alone. God is with you. Why are you anxious about things? Why are you worrying about things if God is with you? You hold so much more value to God. Child of God. He says, do not be anxious. You hold much more value to me than a bird, than a lily, than anything else in this world. Why? Because I created you. I created your body. I created your mind. I created your heart. Not so that you would be anxious, but so that you would trust in me. And so Jesus says this and he responds. He says, listen, you hold much more you hold so much value. Now, the thing is, the reality is, is that in this thing called life, listen, there are so many things that we experience in this world. There are so many things in whatever stage in life, whether you were just got into middle school or maybe you're in the midst of middle school, maybe you're going into high school or maybe you're graduating into college. Listen, in all the, the different stages of life, we can get so caught up and so worried about different things. But the most important thing is sin in itself. We get caught up in when we know that what we're doing is wrong before God. And what we're supposed to be doing, which is right before God, we're not doing. And this produces anxiety in our lives. Why? Because we're like, I don't know if I can walk out of this sin. I don't know if I'm in good standing with God. I don't know if, I'm, I don't know if, my, if salvation, if me being saved before God is, is actually accurate, is actually okay. Am I, am I in good standing with God? I don't know. And because I don't know, because there's uncertainty, because I'm at unease, anxiety creeps in. Now, I want to talk to you guys. Based off the Word of God, not based off what I'm saying, but based off the Word of God, how do we handle anxiety? How can we overcome anxiety through our spiritual relationship with God? And uh, we're going to be going based off Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7. A fun fact for you, these two verses are actually the most highlighted verses in all of the Bible. 
I thought it was John 3, 16, which is for God to love the world that he gave his one and only son. You know the rest. But it actually, it's Philippians chapter 4, verse, verse 6 through 7. And it's, it's a part of the letter that Paul is writing to the church of Philippi. And Paul is writing this letter to the church because, man, the church of Philippi has actually been doing a great job. They've been obedient to God. They've been, they've been pursuing God. They've been, they've been being led by God. And and Paul here is right to this church and he's reminding them of certain truths. He's reminding them of certain things that they have to be aware of. And so in chapter 4, look at what he says about anxiety. Look at what everybody has highlighted in their Bibles. Look at what he, they say. Look at what uh, Paul says. He says, do not be anxious about anything. And I'm going to stop right here. Because statistics say, the America is the most anxious country in the world. The, co- the country that both you and I live in is the most anxious country in the world. As a matter of fact, 30% of Americans have to take prescribed medication from doctors, which is okay to handle and to deal with their anxiety. And 70%, the rest, deal with high levels of stress that they feel like they need prescribed medication. 91% of high schoolers, high schoolers, I'm talking to you now, 91% of high schoolers say that they're dealing with high levels of stress that can lead to anxiety. And by the way, anxiety is not a sin. Anxiety is a sign. Anxiety is a sign that when you are dealing with high levels of stress, it is a sign that you gotta start doing certain things. You gotta start taking certain steps. And we're gonna be talking about what is, what is God saying when it, when it comes to taking steps spiritually. But can I tell you something? Anxiety is not a sin. If you are feeling anxious, anxiety is not a sin. It is a sign. Jesus, before taking the burden of our sin on a cross, in scripture says that he was sweating blood. He was sweating blood. You can only Imagine the amount of worry that he was endured, that he endured before he was crucified on the cross for your sin and for mine. It's not a sin to be feeling anxious. It can lead to it if you don't take the right steps, but it is a sign. And you might be asking, Gabe, what's a sign? A sign to do what? A sign to what? What's the next step that I should take? Well, let's go back to Philippians chapter 4. Or six or seven. And let's see what Paul says on how to handle anxiety. He says, do not be anxious about anything, but, this is the action step, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Now, I love this passage because, uh, you know, there's a song that Bob Marley makes. It's a song, uh, Don't Worry, Be Happy. And, you know, that song is a very catchy song, but it's very like, all right, don't worry, be happy. But the reality is that when, when things come up in our lives, it's very hard to be happy when we're worrying about all these different things. And Paul is not saying, hey, don't worry, be happy. He says, listen, don't be anxious about anything, but these are the steps you got to take. You want to find joy? You want to you receive these? Hey, he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. The first thing is prayer. And so if you're writing down notes, what the first thing I need you to, for you to do and understand is this. The first thing you must do is stop. 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 If you are anxious about different things, if you are worrying about different, if you have a lot of things on your plate, on your mind, God says, listen, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, go to prayer. In order for you to go into prayer, you have to stop. Stop whatever you're doing. Stop whatever is, whatever the, the, your mind is running, whatever the place that you're going, just stop. Get into a quiet place and pray. The first thing you gotta do is stop. You know, in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, uh, 
you know, King Jehoshaphat, which we know in the Old Testament, there's a whole bunch of good kings and, and bad kings, right? And King Jehoshaphat is actually a good king before God. He's obedient to God. He was, he was very, uh, he was very God honoring. He was very, uh, he, 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 he seek to be led by God. And so in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, if you read the chapter, you can read it for yourself. He, he gets alarmed that, hey, you're about to get into war by three different known powerful armies. And King Jehoshaphat and all the people of Judah, they start to go up to the king and they say, uh, we're going to die. We're going to die. We have no chance to stand against these three armies. There's no way that we're going to compete against these three armies. And as they're pre presenting and, and, and they're, they're, they're crying out to, ki the, to the king, King Jehoshaphat, you know what he does? I love it. In verse 6, he's, it says that he is terrified. And in his, in his terror, in his fear, in his anxiety, guess what happens? You know what he does? He tells the people to stop. And he says, go out and start fasting. Start fasting. And what do you, what do you, if you know fasting, fasting is when you sacrifice something. Most of the time we sacrifice food and we dedicate that time, we dedicate that sacrifice to pray unto God, to, to, to seek more of God. So he says, listen, stop whatever you're doing. Let's fast. Let's go and pray. Go find your secret place. Stop. So first thing we ought to do when having anxiety is to stop. In order for this to happen, though, we have to be selfless. We have to be selfless because what happens is that when our mind is running to, to a whole bunch of different places and, and we get anxious about all these different topics and all these different things, whether it's sin or whether it's something that's coming up in your life, whether it's a test, whatever it might be, what happens is that we want to take matters into our own hands. We want to do things on our own strength. So, oh my gosh, I'm anxious about this test. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go do it. I'm going to fill in the blanks and fill in the blanks and fill in the blanks. And I, don't, and I leave prayer to be the last resort before I do what I got to do. And that's what happens. That prayer, most of the time, is our last resort. But Paul here says, hey, this should be your first response. Not your last resort, but your first response to anxiety. The first thing you ought to do, not the last thing you ought to do, but the first thing you ought to do is stop and pray. Stop and pray. God wants for us to talk to him. You know, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 through 7. Look what it says. It says, humble yourselves. Humility. What is humility? Humility means to, to not take things on your own hands, but to be selfless. To be selfless, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so at the proper time, he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him. Why? Because he cares for you. I want for you to understand this truth before we go on to the next step. The reason why Peter says this is because humbling yourself before God and saying, God, I don't know what to do in this situation. God, I need your help. That requires selflessness. It requires humility. And the reason why God says, hey, I need for you to do this when you're dealing with anxiety is because he cares for you. And the reason why he cares for you is because he knows what the best option is for you. He knows your future. You might be uncertain, but he is a God of certainty. He knows, he knows, he is omniscient. He knows all things. He knows what's going to happen. He says, so he says, hey, instead of trusting in what you think is best, Instead of relying on your own strength, instead of thinking, instead of uh, listening to your best friend's opinion, instead of listening to what social media says, he says, hey, listen, stop worrying about what everybody else says and start coming to me. Stop and talk to me. First thing that we do is stop. The second thing is, is supplicate. Let's go back. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Now, this word supplication, if you don't know what supplication means, it's to, it's to plead humbly, to plead humbly before God. You know, when the disciples asked Jesus, God, I mean, Jesus, how should we pray? How should we pray? Like, what is, what is the natural way that we should pray unto God, the Father? Jesus says this. He's, he starts off in the Lord's Prayer, and he says, Father. 
hallowed be your name. And he continues going on, but I want to stop because in this word father, this word is translated to the, to the Greek word Abba. And this word Abba means daddy. It means daddy. And so Jesus, he says that when we pray to God, it's not about, and although God sits on the throne and he is the ultimate authority of our lives, he says, hey, when you pray to God, pray to God as, as children seeking counsel from your father, seeking wisdom from your father. Dad, I need your help. Dad, I need your help. Dad, I'm anxious about these things. Father, I need, I need you right now. You know, when I was a child, if you know me, I, was, I had a speech impediment, and I couldn't really speak a lot. But there's one word that I knew. I was a very chunky little baby. I was very, very chunky. And there's one word that I knew. The one word that I knew was eche. Eche. Now, you're probably like, what does that word even mean? Well, it's leche, but without the L, right? So as a baby, what I'll do is, you see me in the VHS tapes, I'm running around with my diapers, just like running around having fun and saying all these, these different things. I don't even know what I was saying. I was speaking in tongues probably when I was a, when I was a kid. And I'm running around, and, I, and when I'll get hungry, I'll go, eche, eche, eche. And my mom and my dad knew he's hungry. So what they'll do, although that word it wasn't even leche, they knew eche. And what they do, they grab some milk, and they saw me happy going to them, and I got my eche. I got my bottle of eche, and I'll start chugging that junk, just chugging that mug. And I was going, and I was just consuming all that leche. And the reason why I mentioned that is because, listen, that's what God wants for both you and I. We don't got to come to him in, in a professional way, in a specific way. He says, listen, just humbly plead before me. What are your thoughts? What are your anxieties? Cast them, up, cast them on me. Listen, I know, but I want, for you to, I want for you to understand that I care for you. Stop and, and just humbly supplicate and, and plead before, before me. You know, back to that story in King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, in verse 13, we see that he does this actually. He, did, he does this thing called supplication. He humbly pleads before God. Look at verse, th verse 13 in that same chapter. While everybody's fasting, while everybody's praying, look at his prayer before God. He says, oh, our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do. God, I'm helpless. I'm powerless. I don't know what to do. I'm out of control. But look at this verse. But our eyes are set on you. Our eyes are set on you. He humbly pleads before God. He says, God, I don't know what to do. I need your help. My eyes are fixed on you. I don't know what anxieties or what anxiety you will be going through. I always say there's only two people that know this unless you confide in one of us as your leaders, as your directors. There's two people that generally know what's happening in your mind and in your heart. It's you and God. And whatever it might be, whatever it might be, God wants for you to stop and God wants for you to humbly plead before him and say, God, I need your help. I'm weak. You make me strong. The last thing that we ought to do is this. After we stop, after we humbly plead before God, the last thing that we should do is, is seek thanks. So it's three S's. You got to stop. You got to supplicate. Humbly plead before God. And the last thing you ought to do is seek thanks. Seek to be thankful. Now, it's legit the opposite of what we do when we're, when we're anxious. But scripture is very clear. This is not me speaking. This is Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7. It says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. So when we pray to God, when we humbly plead before God, with all this to be said, we should have in the forefront of our hearts gratitude. Now, the question is, 
why should we be grateful? What are we to be grateful for? Like, how does that make sense? I'm anxious about a test. I'm anxious about my singleness. I'm anxious about my family situation. I'm anxious about my addiction. I'm anxious about, I'm anxious. I'm worried about these things. I'm anxious about my future. Why should I be grateful? What is there to be grateful for? And the reason why Paul says this is because what the enemy wants to do, and this is why I say anxiety is not a sign, it's not a sin, but it is a sign. Because what the enemy wants to do is that the anxiety could be like binoculars. And what happens is the enemy wants to continue to zoom in and zoom into the problem with it, and zoom into what you are worrying about and zoom into all these things and we forget to see or we neglect and we ignore to see everything else that God has either blessed you with, that God maybe has even rescued you from, that God has taken you out of. Maybe you're struggling with an addiction. Maybe it's a new addiction. And you start to worry. You start to be anxious about this addiction. And what happens is, is that in your own anxiety, in your own worry, you start to say, you know what? I'm going to handle this on my own, and I'm going to forget about God. And what happens is that when we are not in a posture of God to where I say, God, you know my, you know my, you know my anxieties, you know my worries. God, I'm grateful that you took me out of that situation. Listen, the, your outlook, your posture, it decides not, not to tighten up, but it decides to, to broaden out. And guess what? Now we can see that, you know what? God rescued me. God took me out of that sin. And the same way, God could take me out of this sin. You know what? God helped me in that test. And the same way, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be grateful to God because God was with me in that test and God's going to be with me now. That, hey, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. I am grateful because you are with me. You hold me in your right hand. It's a different perspective. It's a different outlook. When we're dealing with anxiety, we can get very caught up with our worries. We can get very caught up with what we're worrying about with our anxieties. And God says, hey, don't stop, stop worrying about those things and just pray to, pray to me, plead before me, and be grateful for the blessings. Be grateful for what I've done. Why do we want to be grateful? Because gratitude reflects the grace of God. Gratitude reflects the grace of God, things that both you and I don't deserve. If you have a family, be grateful that you have a family. Even that the family situation is not the best, be grateful that you have when there's people that don't have. If you have food that's in front of you, be grateful for your school, that the school is giving you food. Although the school might not be the best, the education might not be the best, be grateful that you have education. Although you're worrying about, listen, be grateful. Seek to be thankful before God. It'll change your outlook, it'll change your perspective, and it'll help you in handling your anxiety. Stop, supplicate, and seek thanks. Gratitude will help you in times of anxiety. You know, uh, the last thing before we close out, as I asked, I asked many people, you know, how do you handle or how do you feel like you can overcome anxiety? There's really two, two, two ways, two, two things that was repeatedly said to me. The first thing is, is to plan. And this goes along, by the way, spiritually in your spiritual disciplines. Or also it could be maybe you're worried about your body. Maybe you're worried, you're anxious about how you see, how, how you view yourself. And, and you're anxious about your weight, you're anxious about your height, you're anxious about a certain thing. The first thing you have to do is plan. Maybe you're worried about the future. You're worried about your school. You're worried about your grades. First thing you should do is plan. That's the first practical step you should do. If you're worried about your sin, plan and set aside some time to pray. Why? Because I love what Jesus says in Luke chapter 14, verse 28. He says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? You should plan before you build that. You should plan before you build that tower. You should plan to see if you have enough money. So before about getting anxious about the future, start where you are. You know what? You're anxious about your future love life, your future relationship. Start preparing yourself as a single young man. Start preparing yourself as a single young woman. 
and prepare yourself internally and, and externally. If you're planning, if, if, if you want to work on your body, start planning, hey, you know what? Three times a week, I'm going to go and work out. You know what? I need to work on my spiritual disciplines. You know what? Every single day for 15 minutes, I'm going to read some scripture and I'm going to pray to God. Plan out. The second thing is to change your posture. Plan to change your posture. You know, as you know, I'm going to close off with this. Uh, I'm right now in the middle, I'm legit right now in the middle of wedding planning uh, with my fiance. Next year, I'll be getting uh, married by the grace of God. And wedding planning can carry some anxiety. I know that uh, some of my leaders and uh, directors who are married, they can attest to this. It can get a little bit anxious and get a little bit worried, uh, worrisome. But as I, not only as I plan for my wedding, but as I, as I change my, my posture and see, you know what, I can get worried and I can get anxious about these things. But man, how great is it that one day I'm going to be living life with Christy. I'm just going to live the rest of my life spending time with her and, and loving on people, loving on God. And when I change my posture and change my outlook on this, it helps me. It helps me plan. There's, it, it produces some joy. It, it makes me be grateful for the position that I'm in. So whether it's spiritual, emotional, mental, physical afflictions and anxieties that you're going with, plan and change your posture. Now, how, how do you handle your anxiety? Remember to stop, to plead before God and give thanks for all that he does. Now, to close off, what I want to do is something different, something we haven't done in a while. Usually I will close us off in prayer and lead us into a moment of prayer. But what I want for us to do is, in, right below me, uh, I'm going to pray something that we're going to pray together. And this is a prayer, not to me, but up to God. I want for you to, as you read these things, I want for you to pray unto God. Not pray to me. I can't change your situation. I can't change your, I can't change your circumstance. I can't handle your anxiety. I, can't, I can walk alongside you and serve alongside you. That's what we're here for. But let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit, God himself, is really the only one that can transform your mind, can renew your mind. And so right now, the prayer is going to be on the bottom. And as I say this, I want for you to say it with me. We're going to pray together. So this is, what, this is our prayer. Father, today I pause and I take some time for you. With any past, present, or future anxieties, I know that you hold me, that you value me, and you love me as your child. You know my anxieties, and I lay them down before you. I don't know what tomorrow will look like, but I know that you care for me today. I thank you, because in my doubt and in my worry, you are with me. Because in my uncertainty, you are comforting me. Because in my fears, you hold me. Thank you for loving me, Father even that I don't deserve it. I trust in your perfect will over my life. And for all my days, I will seek your kingdom. Amen. Let's repeat that prayer once more time. One more time. Father, today I pause and take some time for you. With any past, present, or future anxieties, I know that you hold me, that you value me, and that you love me as your child. You know my anxieties, and I lay them down before you. I don't know what tomorrow will look like, but I know that you care for me today. And I thank you, because in my doubt and in my worry, you are with me. Because in my uncertainty, you are comforting me. Because in my fears, you hold me. Thank you for loving me, Father, even that I don't deserve it. I trust in your perfect will over my life. And for all my days, I will seek your kingdom. And in Jesus' question we pray, amen. Listen, all I know is this, that from this day and on, man, I would encourage you, if you want to write that down, write that prayer down, pray that prayer over and over again. Trust in him 
Cast your anxieties before him. Why? Because he generally cares for you. Stop. Plead before God. Be grateful for him. Be grateful for his grace. That will help you handle whatever life will throw at you. Whatever the enemy wants to attack you with, God says, listen, trust in who I am. Seek me out. Talk to me. Pray before me. I know this will help you with this thing called anxiety. Listen, next week is going to be so powerful. Next week, I want to see you all on our West Kendall campus as we're having a carnival night and we're in our third week of this series called um, I'm Not Happy. All right? Love you all and I'll see y'all next week. God bless you. Thank you.